Well, hi. Good morning. Thanks so much for joining me in my shop today. What I'm hoping to do to this radio is uh, take apart each of these uh, trimmer capacitors and just take a look at the condition of the little parts that are in there and uh, also start changing some of the uh, cracked wires or bad wires and uh, along the way um, I've spent a little bit of time looking at this I think there's a few changes I can make in the layout of the wiring which is really going to simplify this uh, this radio too and by reducing the amount of wires in the radio I reduce the amount of antennas floating around inside this radio that are picking up so much noise so but let's start by taking apart these capacitors and maybe the very start is taking a close look at them here. Now, I, I don't really have any good reason to think there's a problem uh, with them. Uh, from all the operation I've done and fiddling around, they seem to be doing what they're supposed to do. But I think it's worthwhile to take them apart and just make sure, for instance, the uh, dielectric sheets aren't cracked or, or something of that sort is going on. Well, I think I count three of them on here. Three dielectric sheets. Let's see, this one... I think I see two. Two on there. Looks like two sandwiching this this piece of metal here. This is the uh, grid connection for the two. So it kind of looks like uh, this is pinched by uh, two pieces of dielectric squeezed by this nut up here. My guess is these are all constructed the same. sure I'm seeing three, maybe even a double piece on the bottom there. Maybe there's four in there. There's one over. Uh, you see there could be a fracture in the, uh, what I assume is mica here. Uh, looks like two sheets again. Two above and two below. You know what? This might be put together wrong. I, 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 uh, there's two sheets on the bottom there. Look, they're loose enough to move. And then there's two more separated by something. And you can really see under there. We'll find out soon enough. These are not done the same. It just looks like single sheets. Looks like three three different levels of mica on there. Holy, I never, <laughs> you know, I have not taken a close look at these until just now. This would really go into the category of assumptions here. I was assuming this was just the way it should be. So this one It's a double, double sheet on the bottom. <coughs> wow, okay, already things are a little, a little bit more complicated than I expected here. We got the one sheet here. here and then another one there. So in, be in between these two are uh, is this plate that connects to the grid or at least a tube terminal. So 
So this one is the first one in the radio. So the, basically the antenna is connecting to this. The objective is to create a capacitance onto this. What's this sheet doing up here? So we can assume this shaft passes all the way through without contacting this piece, this threaded shaft here. What's this part for? See, definitely two sheets down here. Why would you want this top piece is electrically connected to the nut to the shaft? It seems to be like a washer or something in here. It would potentially, potentially, yeah, that's a good word. Potentially be connected to nothing. Why? Why would it be like that? the same kind of arrangement here. Ooh, a little piece just broke off. That's one of the reasons I've left these alone is because I figure the more you play, you know, mess around with them, the more likely you are to, to cause a problem. So supposed to be, I would think, kind of centered. Look at that one in the back there sticking way out. It's all broken up too, where it's been sticking out. It's way off center. I don't think there's any reason to think there's a short in these things. done the same way again. I have a plate here. What I assume is a mica sheet, a washer, and then I want this washer here to be floating electrically. This one, this is this is kind of done the way my my brain would say it should be done. I simply have this electrode, plastic sheet, this electrode, plastic, a mica sheet or whatever it is, and then this electrode. This is how I would expect them to be done. There's probably no way to get this lower sheet out because this piece is riveted. It's not going anywhere and it's riveted down onto this nut which is locked against the cabinet with this sheet in between. So I'm, so I'm not getting that sheet out. So that means these are original from the factory too, the way they're done here. Nobody, nobody, you'd have to lift this to get at it. So when I look at the bottom, I'm seeing, I'm seeing the way they did it Oops, in the factory. Well, that's the end of the road. Let's go back again and look. So this one has a double sheet. This one has a double sheet. like two down there. Hard to say, but it could very well be a double sheet down there. And double 
what's she here? So, what about this one? Yeah, I think it's two sheets also. I'm gonna guess these are built wrong. Unless, unless, unless the idea here, it's kind of crazy, is you put two sheets below and above. So really fracturing here, little pieces coming off. If you put, and then maybe in the end you decide you only need one sheet here to change the capacitance of this thing. So you take out the spare sheet, what are you going to do with it? So you, you bolt it in above here to kind of kind of keep it in the radio, but electrically it's no longer a, a, a function. Or or is this actually a, a two sheeted capacitor with a floating thing in between? So what's going through my head is. Uh, you can't make a mistake under here, nobody can get at it. So previous repairers may have taken these apart and when they reassembled it, they did it wrong and they put a single sheet up here when they should have put a double sheet against here. Now, are any of them double sheeted down here? They're all done consistently in what I'm concluding is the wrong way to do it. They're all done, you know, consistently except this one. Now this one, that's a double. That's a double sheet. Yeah, it's a double sheet there, and that's the last one. So this is the one that's done the way I think it should. Now the thing is, there's one washer less here. There's the nut, the grid, the top. Ooh, don't do that. Poke a hole in those things. This one's got this washer in between. Where, where'd the washer come from? If this is done wrong, where was that washer before? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Look, look, at, look at the top of this. The top of this has a ring. around it. I would mark where that washer where that washer maybe it's, the washer is supposed to be up on top here. This one also has a ring. A ring around it. Put this one down here, the one I think is right. Hey, there's no is there a ring? No, I'd say no ring. No ring. That's pretty clearly has a ring. That one too. This one too. Okay, so the one that does not have a clear ring, maybe it's just me. It's got the washer under there. Well, maybe, maybe what's happened here is uh, this washer has been lost. It took these things apart, put them back together wrong. They really. Well, you know what? Another way to adjust the capacitance on this would put use different size washers here. Change the surface contact onto the dielectric. So underneath here, I can't really fold that up. Well, the washer is another washer, slightly smaller. So you know, maybe in the factory they're fiddling with these things. Uh, that's how they're changing their capacitance. Put the big washer on. You wouldn't do this though. Put the small washer with a single sheet. 
No, there's two sheets there. Wait a minute, this has got more. This has got too many sheets. One, two, three, four, this has got five. Five sheets. Kind of blows my theory out. It's got a single sheet there. So, you know, I'd be I'd be taking these apart in two seconds. Double on the bottom. to do about this. Um, uh, let's take apart the simple one first. That's this one down here. Now this is this is the last one of the bunch. Now, this guy's in a fairly different position in the circuit. The, these two here are, should essentially be identical. They appear to be put together identically, but it could just be somebody who was consistently wrong. But this one's done a little differently. special about that. So what I'm going to do in order to keep track of everything here, I've got a sheet of paper and I'm going to take the parts off and put them in line down the page. And that's just like I was saying, that's as far as I can go. And now you can see some of the construction here. Um, there's quite a clearance between the shaft and this. These pieces are very rigid in the radio, so there's no way a short's going to develop in there. And this. Is this powder on here, or is that a reflection of light? Like a little 
bit of corrosion there. No surprise. Okay, so here's what we got. First, second, third, and fourth. Three of them in here. One's cracked. This one's got a crack in it. Three of them. Surprises at every turn. Okay, let's do the next one here. This isn't, uh, this isn't metal. This is not metal. Okay. Here's what we got here. Uh, you can see in the background, you can see the other one for comparison. And we have one sheet, uh, curious stains on it, looks just like rust. It looks a little bit like uh, dendritic shapes there. Interesting. There's the non-metal insulator or something bushing and then another piece. So so this is what was sandwiched. Why? Why, why, why? Why, why, why? Okay, on to the next one. years and the springiness inside this this grid uh, terminal is still there okay first thing is a washer Single plastic sheet. Got those same rusty stains. All oh, those stains might be from this material. Another apparently non conductive ring, washer rather. Another sheet. do any more about that. Next one.
other direction here. Got here. It's a little bit out of focus, but you can see it's the same thing. <coughs> so the, these, uh, even though they're hooked up to the same grid here, these two adjustable capacitors are doing very different jobs. One, one is just trimming the big tuning capacitor. It's right here. Trimming, trimming the, that thing like in so many radios. The other one is controlling the amount of what I'm pretty sure is positive feedback from the output back to the input. And the objective is to set up some regeneration which means you bring the set close to uh, oscillating at the frequency of interest and it looks like a big crack yeah it's definitely weak it's weak right along this line here oh well, there's two of them pretty stained with something white white powder I mean it's almost certainly a corrosion product some some salt some metal salt and it could be stuff that's uh, exuded exuded out of these out of these uh, rings here it could be coming right out of these rings again I'm sure when the engineers were designing this one of them at during the design meeting said yeah but you know what that that's not going to last 100 years <laughs> to which the marketing department would say 100 years we already got next year's model coming out I don't want this thing to last 100 years it's just got to last till next year's model Got those newfangled tubes. The guys have been experimenting with the TRF, not TRF, the uh, the opposite, the, not the opposite, but uh, our guys have been experimenting with heterodyne circuits. Now we're going to introduce frequency changer in the radio. When you tune the radio you'll be tuning the frequency changer. After that it's the same frequency. And we can fix tune the rest of the radio and get rid of this big gang capacitor. Come on, we don't want this radio to last long. Nobody's going to want it. By 1929 or 30 this, oh, every one of these radios will be in the dumper. This is what the marketing department will be saying. I don't know if companies were organized back then anything at all like they are today. Uh, but you, you can guess that they had people who were interested in uh, the saleability of their products. I mean, that must have been the case. 
Okay, so I've got them all apart. Huge consistency here. Let's take a look. Let's take a look here. So all of these were all done exactly the same. All or most of them have two sheets underneath here. This last one is done quite differently. Three sheets just squeezed by this. This part's not in there. Why would they construct it like this? Why not? Since you want the metal against the uh, dielectric, why not? Two sheets first go on. That washer goes on. This non-conductive one then goes on the top. Well, what is the purpose of this non-conductive piece? Why, why bother with it? How does this affect anything? And the way it's constructed now, you have this wide washer squeezing onto this, squeezing onto this, thinner, uh, not as not as uh, not as wide. It's of a lesser diameter, squeezing onto this. It's done consistently. would hope anybody who took this stuff apart in the past would have done something similar to what I'm doing to make sure they put it back together the same way. It's just possible that they almost did the same thing I did, and that's underestimate the complexity of how these are done and the number of permutations and how you can put this back together. It's just a few parts, but uh, what's this? Five factorial? Is that how you work this out? How many different ways you could put this back together? Why the difference here from here? So this one's doing a very different job in the radio. It's involved with the 227 tube, the detector. It's doing a different kind of job. And what happens when you put more of these in? rather than one. I would think if you have one, you're going to get a higher capacitance. Put three in there, I, I think it's really going to disturb this thing. In fact, I, I, uh, <clears throat> I have a lot of trouble believing this is the intention. On the other hand, here they are. Here they are. They are here. They came from somewhere. Well, maybe for now I shouldn't worry so much about how to put them back together. Maybe one of you knows the secret to this. So maybe what I'll do, I should have put this on top of a, a board or something, is uh, I, what, I, what I was intending on doing was cleaning these up. So I probably still do. Identify any that are cracked, like I think this one's cracked clean up these surfaces, try and get rid of any stuff on them. I, I, I could reassemble it the way it was. The only reason I should do that is because I think they were correct, even though they really don't make sense to me. I, let's think about this for a minute. This really doesn't make sense at all. But assumably, this non-metal piece here becomes part of the dielectric system in the capacitor, which is then 
between this plate and this plate. So you have a very thin suitable material here. Then you got this thing. Then you got another one. Thin suitable material. Yeah, I don't get it. So where else could this go? An even crazier spot would be directly on, on top here. That just doesn't make any sense to me at all. The other place this could go is right on top of here, right under this. Why would you want to do that? You, you want this to be electrically connected to this, or, or, or touching the shaft. You'd be touching the shaft in there. If you stick this up here, you run a chance <clears throat> as you tighten it down that, first of all, there'll be no contact between here and here. And there may be no shaft contact or intermittent shaft contact in here. Do you know what I mean? I mean with, with, with a good chance that when you're finished adjusting it, this won't even be in contact with this. So you wouldn't want to put this on the top. Okay, another possibility here. It's just I don't know what to think. That this is actually like a piece of uh, acts like a piece of uh, rubber or sponge in the sense that when you tighten this down on this and you're squeezing the sandwich here. that this gives you some springiness. Never, never ever seen anything like that in any kind of this screw down trimmer type capacitor arrangement. It's always just been squeezing right onto this material, usually from a washer like this, usually between washers. Between washers. I'm going to right down at the bottom. That doesn't make sense now. What about these rings? Let me get one with a really good ring. So I can definitely see a ring there. Now this, maybe this was like this. The ring I'm seeing can be this. No, it's bigger bigger than that. The super clean area in the middle. I don't know if you can see this or not. The super clean area in the middle is from this. And then around it there is a ring. And I think it matches with this piece. That doesn't make a lot of sense. It does not make a lot of sense to me. Huh. It's a it's a quandary. It's a uh, it's an enigma. Okay, so we concentrate on this one and try to figure out. First of all, why doesn't it have this piece? Did it have this piece and it's missing now? And these were once, you know, like this, and the piece is here. It's missing. Oh boy! <laughs> uh, I, I, yeah, right. I shouldn't have done this. Now I got a real head scratcher. 40 minutes now on this video. You know what? I think I'm going to leave this alone. I don't know what to do with it. Uh, there's better ideas out there. You may have some good ideas in your head to tell me. I think I even want to clean them because the act of cleaning it, I can crack or break one of these. 
Now it looks like I've got a spare. I've got I've got one or two spares here. Unless you need all three in here to do the thing. Do one more thing here. this onto the grid terminal. These two circuits are up here. Hey everybody, up here. These two circuits are identical in the radio. As far as I know, this one's a little different. This one's entirely different. Compare these. See what we get. just to give me some place to clip here. So I'm just reading between the, uh, the shaft, the threaded shaft, and the uh, grid. Four point four ohms and point two one millihenries. I was doing this a little bit last night. I didn't mention it, but I, I, I spent yesterday washing this radio. I actually hosed it down. I actually covered this part in plastic and sprayed water through this whole part of the radio to wash it out. Soap and water. Yes, I did. So we get 4 ohms and 0.21 millihenries. Try the other side. Six ohms and 0.25 millihenry sounds like a bigger coil. Okay. Um, before I forget, which is it's already too late. Six ohms. 0.21 millihenry, same same coil, a little different resistance, might just be my leads here. Seven point three and point two five. Sounds like a bigger coil again. So those are really good, really uh, uh, these compare really favorably. They Suggest to me that the radio is very consistent through there. I'm not sure what to expect here. I think we might see nothing. So it's uh, 93, about 100k. Uh, this is involved with the volume control. So basically, I'm hooking up to the antenna here through the volume control. Let's change the control setting. Thousand ohms. Turn it back. Hundred and seventy thousand ohms. Just seems okay to me without looking at the schematic and really analyzing it. Seems okay. I'm gonna try this oddball on the detector here. Three mega ohms. Three mega ohms is the uh, uh, grid leak resistor. Which I think is appropriate. I'm 
we're going to do another test here. Instead of reading to this terminal, we'll read grid to ground. Grid to chassis, let's put it that way. Much the same reading in this case. The same, pretty much the same reading as before. And I'm just looking for consistency here. This one's different. So, you know, no open circuits, no short circuits. No inconsistencies. Nothing leaping out and saying, hey Jim, this can't be. It all seems to make pretty good sense. Well, aside from figuring out this stuff, in the worst case, I just put it back together the way it was. I don't know. It's kind of, hey, it's a mystery. I spend the rest of my day investigating these, these things. Hey, thanks so much for watching, and uh, Join me on the next video. Uh, I'll probably will eventually get around to changing some wires. <laughs> well, just an hour or two to the snow coming. See ya.